H was John teaching another Android Studio tutorial. Today we're going to continue with our dynamic fragments, which is actually a really cool part of app development, and I think you're going to enjoy this. All right, first thing I want you to do is start a new Android Studio project, and we're going to call it Fragment Demo. Next, and I'm going to put on Appy 15 because that's 96.2. If you notice that 16 is like 94 or something so it's just a little bit less but it has to be over 11 all right and then next and just empty activity and then next and that's fine and then finish all right well now that you've got your program opened and you are created in a new fragment demo I'd like for you to create two extra layouts and then two Java classes we're gonna call these other leg mat layouts Fragment underscore one underscore layout, fragment underscore two underscore layout, and then the Java classes will be fragment one and fragment two. I put these uh, all this code up on my website so you can go over there and copy and drag if you wish to, or uh, you can look into it and uh, go follow along as we discuss what is here and. Uh, some of this stuff is a little extra left over from earlier. Let's clean it up a little bit. All right. Well, basically what we're going to do with the activity main is you're going to create two very important areas. Uh, they're going to create the button and uh, I put my button towards the top and I made it wide enough to carry the text. And uh, that's really all you need to do. You do need to name it something that you can remember. Uh, I named mine BTN1 and then relative layout this relative layout area is what very important because we're going to use it later to load in our fragments and so I gave it this name target underscore container and if you go back and look at it it's that right there so that's basically the two aspects that you need you need a button and a relative layout area to load up your fragments. All right, now let's go look at the fragment one X layout XML. Basically, all this is is just a background of a color of your choice and then some text on it. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. And then fragment two, a different color with some text on it. I didn't even change much on the uh, <laughs> the text uh, but it, it would be a good idea to at least indicate which one is one and two uh, or you know I didn't even do that I just put two on this one so uh, very simple uh, that's all you need to do is just create a text view uh, put some text in there and that's gonna be your 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 fragment to layout XML all right now let's go look at our main acti main activity Java now this is where all the heavy work is going to be done. Okay. One of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, when you are doing this, I don't know if many of you are having this problem, but on occasion you're doing things like r.ida id. and then you put like things that should fit here and the Android M support the apartment fragment app fragment okay let's copy that and this is from fragment one now if we go in here and see this this is what I've got loaded but if for some reason and I do believe that the machine uh, your your version of Android studio will probably actually load this by default let's highlight that get rid of it Nope. Now, let's go to load the other one. Alt Enter. It's going to give you two choices the Android, that one, and then this one. Let's load this one. All right. So, if you load that one, there is no red here. Everything works wonderfully. But, if you go back to your main activity, you've got this error right here cannot resolve method that right there is because you've got the wrong thing imported here instead of this you've got this 
So that just may be one of the errors that you run into that you're gonna gonna have to keep your eye out on. Um, it's very <laughs> finicky, and I don't know a solution to how to check that uh, as of yet. If I find run across one, I'll, I'll share that with you. I think you just have to be aware of that certain issues cause certain problems, and when you see a problem like that, you begin to look for loading and importing errors. Uh, that's just one of those things I think you have to kept, pick up as you go along. Uh, I put that note in here so you could see it. Uh, so that was one thing that I wanted to point out. Because I think that uh, especially uh, with this version of Android that we're using, that's going to happen to a lot of people. And uh, you're not going to have any idea why it's doing that. And it can be very frustrating. All right. So back to our main activity.java. Uh, I create this boolean status, boolean, and I make it false. And this is going to be to help us uh, differentiate between our load fragment one and fragment two. Uh, then we create the on create, super on create, all this standard stuff. And then click button, which we create. And we're going to find button based off of button one, which we named in activity one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set the, our own text to that button. So what you put here for text really doesn't make any difference because all it's going to do is show up here in your design. It's not actually going to show up uh, in your final process. So if you'll, when, you want, when we run it, you'll see it. The first thing it's going to load up is press to load first fragment. All right. Then the click button, set on cl click listener. We're going to create a new uh, view on click listener. And then we go to the public envoy on click view V. All right, now this right here, we could put here, but we're gonna incorporate it for the purpose of this uh, tutorial uh, into the if statements uh, because it makes more sense and it's easier to follow uh, if, you're, if you're doing this for the first time. Because of those slides I showed you, I'm gonna be doing step one, step two, three and step four okay all right if status equals false which it does because we assigned it false up here then it's going to load fragment one uh, so step one like we said in the slide presentation we're going to create this instance of the fragment a new instance of fragment one and then we're going to go to use the fragment manager step three now we're not using intent so there's not going to be a step two uh, the fragment transaction, I'm going to use that. Now load the first fragment into the relative layout waiting for its waiting, waiting for it on the activity main. And this right here loads that. Arguments are contained for the frag. Um, if you get an error here, we talked about that earlier, uh, that may be because you're loading the wrong imports. Uh, fragment transaction commit, and that commits it. And now you can go back and read these notes. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. And then the click button set text, and this will change the click button set text to load second frag because we just loaded the first one. So we now want to prompt for the second one. And so after it loads, we then prompt for the second one. And then we change the status to true so that we now know that the first button is loaded. So, that means that when next time we do this, the status will be true. So it's going to skip that and go to else. And the else is basically the same exact thing without the comments. Uh, fragment two, frag two, be fragment two, fragment manager. And matter of fact, when you do this yourself, you could probably just copy and paste um, this <laughs> and get rid of all these comments if you wanted to. It would be easier and just replace one or two words. And then the click button set text load first fragment because again we need to reiterate back uh, to the second fragment and then set status of false so that next time you do this again it'll load the first fragment so that is that that helps explain the order of things and how things are working now fragment one very simple um, it's just a, a public class fragment one extends fragment public fragment one required empty public constructor um, 
override public view on create view layout inflator view group container bundle instance saved and then return the inflator dot inflate and then this tells you what we're returning fragment one layout this right here and then the container and then false because that's redundant and it's basically the same exact thing for fragment two so there it is that's a basic example of a dynamically created uh, fragment uh, app now the next app that I'm going to create I'm going to try to make it a little bit more complicated um, but for illustration purposes this works really well and so why don't we run it in order to show what it does that would be nice wouldn't it all right here it is first of all when it loads up it's pressed to load first fragment which I told you we had we uh, loaded on the uh, main activity uh, rather than what was uh, created in the XML so you just press the load to first fragment and there it loads hello blank fragment and then as soon as it's unloading it loads this other text file and you load second frag and that's it that's all there is to it but this activity stays the same and this fragment changes and we're going to see some advantages to being able to add and subtract and things of that nature uh, in the coming tutorials so I hope that's uh, helped you understand the difference between dynamic and static fragments in apps and uh, I hope that this is a really good example and that you're able to understand everything that goes on I'm gonna leave some course uh, resources in the links and links below uh, the video so again please subscribe and thumbs up and I'll see you around